All right, this is the second video in a series dedicated to mastering Rook and Bishop versus Rook. In the first video, I didn't go over the fifth Zen, so I'll do that in this video. But first, let's look at simpler positions where the defender's king is two squares inside the bishop's triangle, but the attacker's rook occupies the file that the defender's rook would normally occupy when employing a Zen defense. Alright, this is black to move and win. This time, white's king is two squares within the bishop's triangle. So, even though the rook is not in line with its bishop, black still has a dynamic checkmating idea because the bishop can check with tempo. The defender's king's on the same color as the bishop, so black wins with king to d3. And now there's no escape, and the bishop is threatening bishop c3 check, followed by rook to f1 mate. And since the e1 square is going to be covered as well, it's not going to matter that the rook can try to defend it. It's still going to be checkmate. And then it doesn't matter if the rook checks here, because the bishop was going to go here anyway. White's only other option is to pin the bishop to its king. White doesn't have any checks, so black can win with tactics like we saw earlier with the king one square inside the bishop's triangle. So rook to g5 would be a mistake because rook to f8 reaches a drawn Zen defense. Black plays rook to a5, and then white's only option is to threatened to escape the bishop's triangle, and now with the king one square inside the bishop's triangle, this is just like we saw before where black has an unstoppable mate and this rook doesn't have any options. Black can keep the rook on the A file and now threatens bishop to d3 check followed by rook to a1 mate, so white's only option is to pin the bishop and now with the rook no longer controlling the d-file, black can go ahead with this. Alright, this is black to move and win. In this position, the formation is closer to the edge, so it's more complicated because the rook doesn't have an extra file to threaten checkmate on the first rank, so if there's an extra file then the rook could move over there, and then king to d1, and then rook to e5. But since there's no extra file here, white could simply play king to b1, and then block on the c file, and this position is a draw. So because black can't use the same method as before, Black has to use a more clever method of forcing the rook off of one of these strong posts. So this will show why the rook is generally not good when it's placed closer to the action. It's kind of similar reasons as in rook and knight versus rook. When the rook's further away, the enemy pieces don't influence it as much. So when the rook is on the 6th rank or the 5th rank, there's going to be ways to exploit the rook's lack of a blocking move on the d file or the c file. So the correct move here is rook to d7, zugzwang, controlling the b7 square. Now the rook has no options to maintain the pin except rook to b6 and rook to b5 and there's going to be ways to exploit either so if rook to b6 then black exploits the rook's lack of a block on d6 so rook to f7 threatening checkmate and there's no way for white to employ a zen defense so with the rook on b8 then this would be a draw but with the rook on b6 the b6 square is restricted by the bishop, so there's no way for white to defend checkmate here. 
so instead of rook b6 if rook b5 this time white has a clear path to the d file if black tries rook e7 but with the bishop controlling c5 black can play a variation where white's rook would have to block on the c file so rook to a7 king to b1 and now the rook can't block on the c file if the rook was had a safe path to the c file then this position would be a draw all right this is black to move and win it's a fifth zen it's not a draw like the similar formations in this formation the defenders kings quickest escape route from the bishop's triangle is simply leading to this perpendicular edge so there's just a symmetrically equivalent triangle prepared to entomb the king and also because the rook has to maintain control of the line adjacent to the edge in order to prevent the checkmate This rook is going to be subject to skewer when the attacker's rook relocates, but from the position where it is, the skewer's going to be refuted. The king simply supports its rook, and now black has a second rank defense here. It's a second rank defense along the b file, so it's not going to work if black goes for that skewer immediately. Also, if instead of trying for the skewer, uh, remember that when the rook is close to the action, it's easy for the attacker to gain tempo by attacking. So, and the rook doesn't have good access to important squares, like it can't check here. So, but remember the second rank stalemate theme we looked at last time. It's a key theme here where black can't really do anything to keep his king uh, on the strong c file so it's like what we've seen before but the c files the third ranks the c file and the second rank is the b file so it's just going to be stalemate tactics there and then black's king won't be able to reach the strong c file but if black's bishop was on c3 it could control b4 and then black would capture with the bishop instead and then it wouldn't be stalemate so black wants to aim for a position like this but with the bishop on c3 instead and the problem with playing bishop c3 immediately is that white simply repeats positions so there's the way that black gets the bishop on c3 is going to have to be coming from white checking so then the rook's not going to have enough tempo to come and check on the d file and this b5 square is optimal because it defends the skewer from the furthest possible location so that this tempo gaining move is not as strong as the tempo gaining move if say black wastes a move trying to get the rook off this optimal location if rook b4 this still avoids the skewer but the tempo gaining move is a lot stronger so black would have an easy win here after check and then check with the bishop so the b4 square is closer to the action so black's tempo gaining move is stronger the only way to keep the rook on this optimal b5 square is to check with tempo and then return the rook to b5 but now black's gotten what he's wanted he has the bishop on c3 where it controls b4 so there's no stalemate theme in the future so now black can go ahead and play for this tactic and now this is no longer going to do anything because the rook doesn't have time to return 
to its normal post, this king has to move immediately, so this block would have white's rook in a bad location. So instead of going for the skewer here, which would be refuted by a second rank defense along the B file, black attacks the rook with tempo, reflecting the formation of the king. So now the triangle is along the A file, and black is threatening rook A1 mate, and this rook is under attack, and this stalemate attempt is refuted by a bishop capture instead of a king capture. So white's only move here is pretty much to obstruct the rook's path to A1, the b1 square is now taken away from white's king, so white's going to have a harder time escaping the a file. So now it's like white's rook is doing what black's rook needs to do. So it's like black has two rooks when he moves the rook over, but first black needs to gain a tempo to move white's king further into the bishop's triangle. So now it's going to take white's king extra time to get out, and this rook obstructs the square so it's like it's doing what black's rook would want to do so now when the black rook swings over threatening checkmate white doesn't have time to move and then escape it's as if black had another piece controlling here so this is just pretty much an easy win and there's no check here there's no second rank defense checks so this is it all right so quick review of the fifth zen position the defender's king is closer to the corner than normally so it's going to end up on the edge so black has an easy win here the it's not going to work if black attempts the tactics immediately because of the stalemate so first black has to waste a move and the only way for the rook to return to the optimal location would be to check with tempo and then return but with the bishop on c3 now the bishop is stopping the stalemate tactic in the future so before gaining the tempo black needs to reflect the formation of the king now this tempo move is a lot stronger sealing off the b3 square and it doesn't matter that it no longer controls c2 and the rook also threatens mate with this tempo move so with the bishop controlling b4 there's nothing that white can do but obstruct the rook's path and then after gaining a tempo forcing the king to have to use another move to escape white doesn't have time to move and move the rook and escape, but he would have time if the king was here instead.